Okay, so uh, this is just a short tutorial on basically how to trim a long clip down into a much shorter clip without making it sound too obvious. Uh, and we're going to go over two different techniques here. Um, you can either go, uh, basically I've got a stock piece of audio here, which sounds a bit like this. Now what we need is we need a beginning, a middle and an end. Uh, now, most pieces of stock, and most songs as well, most like sort of top 40 tracks, they've got a structure to them, which is normally you've got some form of lead-in, which is quite unique, you've got a lead-out, which is quite unique, and then the centre normally has set patterns, or at least it has uh, a same verse or a same uh, chorus repeated over and over again, which you can sort of take advantage of. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut this two and a half minute or nearly three minute uh, clip down to a about a minute, that's what we're going to aim for here. So I can see by the waveforms at the moment this is an introduction because all the uh, all the levels are quite low um, and then around here this is where it should uh, kind of kick up or rather the beat should kind of kick in and this makes up the main meat of the song right here. Uh, because you can tell because the waveforms are much louder and they've uh, also got a certain pattern about them. You can sort of see these same areas repeating over and over again. So let's uh, take a listen and just make sure that we're about right there. So I expect the intro to finish about here, the main meat to start about here, there to be a bit of a downbeat and then it kick it, and then for it to kick back into that same structure as before. So let's give that a try. So here's our intro. And now I'm expecting it to actually kick in. Yep, perfect. And like I said, at the end of this bit, just here, I'm expecting some form of a downbeat or maybe some form of alternative, uh, kind of a remix of this sort of same pattern. Yeah, it's just like a backbeat. So what we can do here is instead of having uh, this backbeat play, because uh, just around around a minute after this main sort of uh, chunk, uh, this main sort of pattern is actually finished, we could actually lead in and actually finish this track all together. So what we need to do is we need to find two bits which should gel together quite well. Um, and the way that we do that is uh, basically by jumping to the end and finding a, the end of a beat. So we sometimes have to kind of count it in. So let's go from, uh, let's go for the outro and just have a listen to this. <laughs> So it's the same kind of pattern. Uh, let's go ahead and pick off the last bit and we need the outro to be quite unique. So we're gonna go ahead and take this little chunk right here. And that's the beat, uh, as you can hear. One, two, three, four, you ready? So you can hear that sort of, you know, 4-4 four, four beat. We can play up to that by basically taking advantage of exactly the same beat which appears over here. So we can go... Now one of my tricks uh, is to actually find a cymbal crash in the music and timing it with that because uh, the the crash actually ends up masking the cut most times. Uh, so there was there was actually two just then, so we're gonna go ahead and take advantage of that one right there. So here we go. We're gonna go on the second one. So what we need to do is we need to cut in nice and close. We need to find out where that cymbal crash is. That's the one just there, just right there. So if I click and play that now. So that's the first one. Uh, so we'll forget about that one because we want the second one. So that's the first one. And there's the second one. And you can kind of see it in the waveforms that it actually does spike up a little bit there. If we just go over that and just make sure that that's about the right area for us to cut. Yep, spot on. So that's, uh, not only is that a beat, but that's also a cymbal cut. So we can actually take advantage of that. So let's keep that cymbal, uh, let's just keep that cymbal in there and go. So we can actually take advantage of that now and just go ahead and cut all of that out. So what I've just done there, sorry to slow, I, obviously I, I always forget to slow down. Um, I'm going to go ahead and literally take this entire chunk out and then I'm just going to go and delete this gap and then that way we only have a one minute lo uh, long clip. So let's have a listen to it now because we are still going to have to work on this to make it sound right. <laughs> As you can see, uh, we've got an issue there, is that 
you're expecting a second so uh, symbol crash, but we don't have it because we cut it out. So what we're going to do in this situation is we're going to actually keep that uh, symbol crash in, and then we're going to lead on. Uh, lead. The, we're going to blend these two in together by doing a cross dissolve. So let's give that a quick go. Let's bring that uh, symbol back first. So there it is. So it's just there, I think. There, just there. So. So that's going to be our cutting bit. So we can use that, and then let's just make sure this is going to time up about right as well. What might make this easier is if we can find a second symbol and blur that in with the other se uh, section. So we're going to try and find a uh, symbol on this end of the clip. We can expect none to be at this part because this pattern just repeats over and over again. I would expect there to be a symbol at the end of the last sort of variant of the uh, audio though, so the last verse if you will. There they were, exactly the same pattern. So we're going to take this one, as you can hear there's that first uh, symbol crash, and there's a the second one. So we're going to actually take this symbol crash, time it in with this one, find the point where we can uh, cut on this one, so go. And there's our second symbol crash, so let's delete that second symbol crash from the first clip, blend them together, and let's see what it sounds like. Perfect. So that actually just sounds uh, spot on. The only thing is, is we wanted to hit a minute, and the moment it's still running at a minute 15. Now, this part repeats, this part loops over and over and over again. So what we can do is we can actually trim out, using exactly the same uh, technique as we just did, we can trim out a smaller part of this clip. So let's go ahead and give that a go. So that's where the uh, sort of, we've got a little pattern going on here. It goes, da -da 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 and then it goes back up again so we can just go ahead and go up down up down all day um, so we don't actually need any of that we don't need that we don't need to hear that repeating bit over and over again we can just hear the start one the end one and just cut the middle bit out so let's go ahead and do that so I'm going to find that pattern first And there's the end of it, so that's the end of our pattern just there. So we just need to find the beginning of the pattern again at a later stage in the song. And there it is, there's the, there's the beginning of the pattern one more time. So let's delete that chunk again using exactly the same technique as before. Zoom in, let's see how this looks. The waveforms seem to go right into each other, so we're going to give this a quick go and just see how the cut sounds. Perfect. Nailed it. So now we've got a one minute long clip and let's uh, let's just give that a listen through. So let's listen to these two cuts right here. You can't tell. And let's, let's try this one as well. Perfect. And not only that, but we do actually change to a different pattern, but it sounds natural. So there we go. So we've now cut this song now from three minutes to one minute. Um, and that's great. The only issue is, is if, uh, say for example, if we couldn't uh, do that with our song, as if, uh, as in, if if our uh, our song doesn't sound as uh, sort of, I suppose, as well produced as stock, because stock is very very well produced and it's normally produced quite robotically in some ways. Uh, that they, they'll repeat the same pattern over and over again, so it makes it very easy to cut. Um, what we can do is we can actually go ahead and harness a little trick which I do, which is a, um, uh, basically it's used a lot in films. Uh, all it is is it's a backward cymbal crash uh, leading up to add some drama and then we cut as the cymbal, uh, uh, as, as the cymbal ends. Basically the mental state of the audience is they're expecting something at the end of that cymbal crash but they're not sure what, but they're prepared for it, they're ready for it. So when that change happens, they were expecting it. They didn't they, they didn't not see it coming, so it doesn't sound as jarring. So you can actually ha you have uh, you actually have a lot more leeway with what you do in that in that. So you can actually make more jarring cuts with this. So let's go ahead and uh, see if we can make a jarring cut. Uh, let's give this a go. It's obviously got to be within rhythm um, because anyone can notice that something's out of rhythm. But we're we're going to be keeping it in rhythm, but trying to make the, the cut as jarring as possible. 
So that's an interesting part. Let's take that section and let's try and blend it with. So there's there's some more strings appeared around here somewhere. Much later into the song, it actually develops and actually picks up some more strings. So let's try and introduce those strings with this uh, with this cymbal cra crash. So that's still in beat. We've been cutting on the beat there. So at the moment, our cut sounds like this. Oh, that's horrible. That's that's I, I don't even get away with that. Um, it's a uh, it's a completely different section of the song, and it doesn't sound like it's part of the song at all. Uh, let's try and extend this just to try and make it sound a little bit like it's actually still part of the song. <laughs> So that's the end of that little verse. So that sounds good. Let's see how that sounds at the moment when we cut those bits together. There we go. So that, that, that doesn't sound great. That sounds pretty hideous if you ask me. But we can work with this. So what I have here is just a little clip. Uh, it's a reverse symbol. You can download it from uh, freesound.org by searching for sweeping symbol, and it's the first one that appears. It is a reverse symbol crash sweep from a user called Stare. So let's go ahead and we'll click on that. And our our our, our waveform looks relatively simple. Basically, the sound effect sounds a bit like. What we'll do for played. So you've got bags of time outside of it. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be cutting on that cut. So when the symbol goes from this very, very loud waveform to this very quiet waveform, we're actually just going to go ahead and cut at that point. So I'm setting my out point here, and I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop this onto the timeline. And we'll click on that to bring it up. So you can see our ramp. Um, what we want the ramp to do is we want it to get louder and louder and louder and more dramatic up to that point, and then cut and then literally cut out because the audience is expecting something they're waiting for something uh, they just don't know what it is so we're going to actually make the we're going to go ahead and right click on this little area here and actually I'm going to make it because some people might be using Final Cut I'm going to go ahead and go into Audio Effects and now I'm going to go to uh, sorry Audio Transitions I'm going to go to Crossfade and click on Constant Gain but you can use any form of uh, Audio Transitions as long as it's a Crossfade um, so what that will do is that will basically kind of blend them together to a certain degree to make it sound less uh, suspicious. And if we expand that as well, then it also masks the cut a little bit more because we've added a new element to actually sit over the top of this fade. So let's see how this all sounds now. I don't think it'll be perfect, mainly because I haven't timed this up right. Uh, so let's get that. Let's get this, this this little area right here, This the bit where the, uh, where the little... Um, what's it called, the little waveform sort of climaxes, when it gets to that very, very, very big dramatic bit, that's where we want to cut on. So we're just going to literally cut that end bit out. So let's see how this sounds. sound bad um, but because we didn't actually cut on like a big dramatic area we could uh, we, what we really want to do is want to bring this we want to bring this uh, to the right a little bit uh, because we want it to uh, blend in with one of the symbols we want we want this part this 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 big dramatic part not to just lead up to the cut but we actually really want to lead it up to the to a some form of climax or some form of uh, payoff I guess and at the moment our cut if we if we blind this out doesn't actually lead up to anything it just it's I mean our cut we are the the audio in which it cuts on is a snare which isn't very exciting what we really want to do is we want to cut an exciting I don't know like a uh, uh, like a symbol, a symbol would be perfect. I think there's one right here. There is one right there. So what we really want to do is we want to build up all this drama and lead up to this symbol. So I pulled this, uh, I pulled my um, uh, reverse symbol all the way over to here. So we're expecting it. We're expecting some form of payoff at this point, which will be our symbol crash. So let's give this a go. Perfect.
So we've gone from something that sounds a bit like this. Whoops, I'm not going to say that. Like that. We've, got, we've gone from something that sounds like this. Ugh. To something that sounds a bit like this. It sounds like it's part of the song, and that's exactly what we're going to go for. Um, one of the other tricks I tend to do is also add metronomes as well. If I don't have like the full um, uh, clip, I add something which... I add like a metronome, so like a click track of at that BPM of the song, and then I uh, introduce the rest of the song in with that, uh, just so that people have got some, some kind of a lead in beforehand. So hopefully that's helped out, cutting tracks and cutting it to make it sound as if it's still part of the song, make it feel like as if it's uh, sort of cut for the length of the video is kind of difficult, um, and particularly when you're kind of working with stop music, it can be a bit of a nightmare to try and make it jam together. But it's all about just finding the right timing, it's all about finding the right sections to actually glue together, and then uh, like adding little sort of like tricks, like the little sweep symbol on the way up to one of the big dramatic areas. Um, and this uh, this exact same technique can also be, be applied to video. Like you can actually uh, use this cymbal crashing sound or this reverse sweep in with a uh, like a fade, a large fade to white, like a very very long fade to white, because uh, there's audio and visual feedback there. You can hear and see something connecting. Um, so it sounds all very philosophical, but it does make sense in the long in the uh, long term. Uh, so I hope that's helped out, um, and let me know if you have any other problems or if you'd like to see anything else like this. Um, I would be happy to put out more little tips like this as and when I can. Take it easy. Thank you very much.